Good morning, you two. How are you doing? Good, Al. How are you? Absolutely Great. fantastic. Man, I'll tell you what, where did the idea come from to turn MacGyver into a musical? Because when I first read about this, I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. But what a brilliant idea. <laughs> well, it is, it is crazy, I agree. But, but so MacGyver was one of those TV shows, Arrow, that the whole family used to watch yep. together. Yep. Okay? Usually television divided the household. You know, dad wanted to watch sports, mom wanted to watch the soap operas and the dramas, the kids watched the cartoons and the comedies, and MacGyver was one of those shows where dad said, no, I want to see what he's going to come up with this week, and mom said, boy, he's really cute, and he doesn't use a gun, and the kids went, wait, you're going to watch this show together, and we can watch it with you? And so I wanted to create at least one MacGyver entertainment that wasn't something that you could simply sit alone in, at home and watch on the screen that the whole family or the whole community could experience together. And so I said, let's try doing it as a musical. And then a dear friend of mine, who unfortunately is no longer with us, said, well, if you're gonna do MacGyver as a musical, to really make it MacGyver, you should cast the lead role of MacGyver out of the audience in every performance. And I said, what are you talking about? That's crazy. And she said, it could be done. And so we, in fact, tried it and it works better than anybody could have imagined. So that was really the genesis of it. And then I found Peter uh, through a mutual friend of ours and explained this to him. And his first response was, you're crazy. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but but agreed to start writing songs for it. And uh, and here we are. Now we got an album. Now, Peter, is, is it the, the type of thing to where you had to sit down and look at the production first before you were motivated to write the music? Or did, because you, you grew up basically watching probably MacGyver as well, is that, okay, I understand the, the guy's attitude. I understand his exploration. I think I can pull from this. Um, well, in point of fact, uh, th there was no script when I, wow. or, there was the, the very first songs I wrote was for an older version of the script in 2011. And I was, as I recall, working off an outline, it was sort of Lee explained the concept for me to me. And then I came back with my first demo was, uh, the song that certain, the music for which survives almost exactly as it was, although it has been expanded. That's the opening song in the album, MacGyver, imaginatively named MacGyver. <laughs> but my first approach was, oh, this is an audience member. Well, let's let's be as ridiculous and let, let's let's have fun embarrassing this 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 person who has no nest doesn't necessarily have any training as much as we can. And we really liked the feel and the music, but said, no, no, that's not the attitude. We actually want to uplift the audience member and make him the hero. And as we worked. You know, as we all work together to develop the story and the script, and um, you know, I never start songs until there is some dramatic uh, underpinning. So um, there, there, the, the story had to reach a certain point before I started writing story, story context songs. Obviously, it became clear that that this idea of celebrating the audience member was the key to the whole thing, because the problem with the problem with just making fun of the of the uh, audience member, it's just not, it's gonna get old very, very fast. Um, for to, for a, a musical to sustain an evening, evening, you have to create opportunities for um, some emotional depth. And that's, uh, that's so, so the process was really lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of discussion, a very detailed outline, draft of the script, then I dove in and, and you know, of course I was very, you know, I, I spent a lot of time helping people and coming up with song moments. That's when I started demoing and seeing how things fit together. I think it's incredible that you guys took on this journey. And the reason why is because because of La La Land and all that jazz, we love musicals. And and, and, and so when we get to see something that we're familiar with and, and, and it is a musical, I mean, we want to put it in the car with us. We want to take it to work with us. So So it's so important to those of us on this side of the sound. Well, absolutely, that's, that's <laughs> we feel the same. So. <laughs> now, it most you know so so often, especially during the the uh, early part of the nineteen nineties and in, into the eighties as well. When someone put out a soundtrack, the first thing they wanted to do was hurry and get on radio, get it on radio, get it on radio. Was it was that ever a thought when you were putting this together? Uh, honest, honestly, I, I would have to say no because we were working on the show. And when we were doing uh, 
in, in February and March of this past year, 2022, when we were doing the world premiere of MacGyver the Musical in Houston, I started getting calls from producers saying, hey, I'd love to do your concept album. And I said, great. What's a concept album? <laughs> they, said, they said, oh, well, you can, even though your show is, you know, it's not all over the country or on Broadway or whatever it is, you can do uh, an album based on the songs from the show. And I said, well, we have great songs. So we decided to do uh, this album, um, which is obviously dropping uh, tomorrow. And if it ends up on radio, it's like so much the better. The obviously the premise behind this is to let people know that there is a, a MacGyver the Musical show, number one. And number two, they said, if the album does well, you can use the resources from that to sort of get to your next production. So it's it was kind of a, a, a sort of no-brainer to say, yeah, let's go ahead and make this album because we know the music is good. The audience members keep telling us how much they love the music and where can I get this music? So we went, all right, let's go ahead and make an album. And then obviously radio is a, is a you know, clear place for it to end up. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we're talking to you. I, I wish I wish I would have been in Houston with you guys on opening night because, I mean, to be in that moment where, where you know in your heart, you, you felt it in your head that, okay, we're bringing all of this together into this production. Now let's give it to the people. My God, that must have been one of those moments. Once in a lifetime, maybe? Well, well for me, it was, go ahead, please. No, you got it, Peter. Well, for me, it was more than that because two days before um, opening night, the music director who who is is on stage as a member of a punk band came down with COVID and I realized if we were going to open, it was going to be me on stage playing this very, very complicated keyboard part and singing backgrounds and, mm. and all that. So <laughs> it was definitely a night to remember for me. It was kind of a blast. It was also absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, but the feeling you're talking about is exactly right. None of us, you know, uh, we did a workshop production, so we knew this could work. But until you see how that audience just goes <laughs> crazy over the fact that somebody from them, from the, one of them is the star of the show, the feeling is, is, is almost indescribable. And I say to people, you don't really know what this is until you've been in that theater and seen it happen, because it's one of those experiences where it doesn't matter how much we describe it, until you're part of it, you you just don't really know what it is. Crazy as it sounds. <laughs> we, we've become so spoiled here in Charlotte when it comes to the Broadway series. I mean, I mean, will you guys eventually put this on the road where you can come to the to the individual theaters? Um, so the plan is we hope to off of the album start figuring out where the next venue is and and the goal actually our is to is to um, have a number of these up and running around the country mm -hmm. simultaneously. So rather than just doing a, a road tour where you, you take it to one place for a, a few weeks or a month, a few months, the goal is to see if we can set it up in a place and, and because it's a different show every night, because we have a different MacGyver every night, and we've had MacGyvers of all genders and all ages, you know, see how long it lives there because we think it can live in places for quite some time and, and then take it to other cities. So we might have several of these productions running around the country simultaneously so that if you are, you know, an hour away or two hours away, you can go see the show as opposed to saying, well, I have to go to New York or I have to go to Vegas or I have to go to L.A. to see this. How do you pick out the MacGyver in, in, inside the theater? Is it, is it like the price is right? They're watching you as you're coming into the theater and you just reach out there and grab one? No, we don't do it that way. We actually <laughs> hold a 10-minute audition right before the show starts. So oh, we get wow. the whole audience together. We ask for a couple of volunteers from the audience. We pick three or four who, who've raised their hands or said, I want to be MacGyver. And usually, by the way, they show up ready to be MacGyver. I mean, they're wearing <laughs> leather jackets. <laughs> they've got plaid shirts and, you know, carrying Swiss Army knives. Um, and then we put those three or four volunteers. We ask them to act a line and sing a line and dance. And then by their applause, the audience chooses who's going to be MacGyver oh that night. God. And as soon as we identify that person, we start the show. Man. 
Now, when, musically, do, do, do you find yourself allowing that music to evolve? Because the more and more of the performance that you see and experience, I mean, there, there's got to be something inside your imagination saying, oh, I got to change that. Let's make this greater on this side. Or are you pretty much like, nope, this is set. We have to stay. Um, well, uh, as with any musical, uh, I, I have to say the lead up to both the, tell, the Telluride uh, fully staged workshop and the Houston uh, world premiere it was it's preparing preparing a, a musical is utter insanity in the final stages and and of the best kind it was an absolutely fascinating experience both times but i would say for the most part we were not changing things based on our experience with the audience macgyver the audience macgyver does make up the melody for an entire song um so we definitely did do some playing with that because there's a very tricky balance how hard do you want to make the test? You want to make the task, um, you want to give him enough words so that there's a good challenge, but not so many words that he just falls, he or she, or they fall flat on their faces. You know what I mean? So, so other than that, the revisions um, to the lead up to both, uh, to the beginning, to the opening of both of those productions were really much more based on, okay, where is the musical flowing well and where isn't it? Um, I would say, um, dialogue and stagecraft changes were, and Lee, you can maybe speak to that more, um, were more based on our experience of, okay, the audience MacGyver really had trouble with this or that. Mm. But, um, so that would be and, and believe it or not, what we've discovered as we've worked on this is the more we focus on the audience MacGyver, the longer we can keep them on stage, the more we can give them to do the better the show works. Oh, you would wow. think, boy, it should be just the opposite, that you want, you know, the professional singers and, and musicians and dancers to, to be taking the spotlight. And the truth is, as we work on this, the more we put that audience MacGyver at the center of the show, the better it works. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that, which, which was the most fascinating insight for me in this whole process from the very first from the very first appearance of the first MacGyver in Telluride at the workshop, is that the second that person is on stage, they become the audience on stage. They become the audience's wow. connection to the show. So to the extent that MacGyver is not on stage, the audience feels like they're not on stage. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it doesn't, it works a little differently from a traditional musical in that regard. So when I'm sitting in the car listening to the soundtrack, what what do you guys envision? I'm sure you've done research and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm also sure that you sat in the car listening to it when after the tracks were mixed down. What was the emotion that you picked up on? I'll, I'll let you answer that, Peter. <laughs> well, I live in New York City, so I haven't done a lot of sitting in cars recently, but, um, but for me, it's always... Oh my God, does this work? Oh my God, does this work? Until the final mix where I go, oh yeah, this works. Um, and then I listen to the whole thing and, and I'm like, wow, that really was a lot of work and I'm really glad we made it to this point. I'm not sure that's the answer you're looking for, but I'm very, very, very proud of it. I'm deeply grateful to to all of, you know, to Lee for making all this happen and to the incredible talent that went in, both in terms of the cast, the band, and, and Michael Marks, the uh, lead pro producer on the album. Um, and, but I would uh, say so. I would say that the experience that I have when I sit in the car and listen to this because I live in a place I live in New Mexico and so I got to get in the car fairly often if I want to go anywhere <laughs> is it's fun it's a fun emotional journey yeah so this show has a, a lot of playfulness to it and fun, but as Peter said, it's not a spoof, it's not a goof, it's not MacGruber, yeah. you know? Yeah. We have fun with MacGyver, we don't make fun of MacGyver. Or, and so when you listen to these songs, you're really sort of tracking the story, obviously, but, but more than that, you're tracking the uh, sort of fun emotional experience that has some heart in it and has some daring in it, you know, and at the end, you just kind of feel like this would be fun to be part of. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the goal we were after. And, you know, knock on wood, I think we got it. Wow. To, to have that little punk edge to it. I mean, I mean I've, I've been with uh, Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, and I, and, and I was bringing up punk, and he says, Arrow, it's not punk, it's the blues. It's the blues. So do you, do you call it that punk, or what, how, what, what would be the best way to describe it? Well, I would call it 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, ahead, go Peter. Uh, I would call it pop punk. Yeah. So, so it's you know it's it's not there's melodies that we try and make it catchy. It's the sound of you know it's the sa- it, to, to try and get the greediness and the and the harshness of punk, but but still make it um, you, you know a Green Day is 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 an apt comparison, I would say. Um, uh, Green Day, Nirvana. Um, that, that's so the set. the show is set in it's a period piece. It's set in East Berlin in 1989 oh when my God. The punk music was <laughs> uh, in, interestingly instrumental in helping to bring down the Berlin Wall. So yes. we've just put MacGyver in there and said, guess what? History never recorded this, but MacGyver was instrumental <laughs> in bringing down the Berlin Wall, and he used a punk band and Bratwurst and beer to do it. Come see the show and figure out how that works. So, oh, my so that God. Was kind of, that was where the punk sort of influence came from, and we wanted, because MacGyver, the original MacGyver was obviously a show of the 80s, we kind of went with that sort of 80s pop tune vibe initially but some songs are clearly you know broadway tunes so what what's and there's so- even some opera in there um if you listen to trust no one or play the game and there's a strong you know uh, it's sort of i just was like what does this moment need and i wrote that and it seemed to work so that's where we are so why i i think there's a wide variety you, you play with so many emotions with this. And, and, and the fact that it, it started out as a thought and then you start building it with other people. And I mean, I mean because there's, there's a piece of MacGyver in each and every one of us. And, you know, not only do we want to be in the production, but we want to sing along with it as well. Uh, well, if you go to if you go to our website, Arrow, which is uh, just MacGyver.com, M-A-C-G-Y-V-E-R.com. The first thing you'll see is a piece of duct tape, and on it is written, there's a MacGyver in everyone, and anyone can be MacGyver. And oh that's kind of where we're coming from with this musical. <laughs> you guys have got to come back to this show anytime in the future. You've just got something that's so magical and so precious to people that, that I just know this is the first step of a brand new beginning. Be brilliant today, you two. 